What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and I've seen this image, and I thought it was cool. And then I thought, well, how do we model something like that in Revit? How do we create this really cool uh, hexagon uh, panel facade inside of Revit? And that's exactly what this tutorial is going to be all about. Uh, now, if you've missed it, my previous video that I have recorded, uh, I've covered how to create a perfect hexagon uh, panel or a unilateral hexagon panel where all sides are the same length. Uh, now, this might sound easy, but actually it's a bit complicated in Revit just because uh, you have to use uh, a workaround to get to that. So if you've missed that video, I'm going to link it up in the cards above. So make sure to watch it before this, because there I explained the whole approach to creating these types uh, of panels. Uh, and also before we jump into the video, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. Uh, that's where I place all of my Revit courses. I have over 130 hours of content and I cover topics for beginners, intermediate, as well as advanced level users. So there is something there for everybody. I go slowly step by step and explain all of these complex topics and concepts inside of Revit. Also there you can find my customized Revit templates. You can find some really, really high quality Revit families as well as a plugin. Uh, now, also, before I get started, make sure to like this video. It really helps me out a lot. And make sure to subscribe, not only because it helps you not miss any of my future videos, but it makes the alpaca happy. And that's what we want. Okay, now let's finally jump into Revit, and here we are. So we're at Revit's homepage, so I'm just going to go here to Models and to New, and let's start a new model, and let's go into our architecture design template for this. So I'm just going to click OK, and then let's let Revit start right up. Okay, so this is just the starting screen, so let's go perhaps to south elevation first. I'm going to get rid of that start screen. And here we have a couple of levels. Now let's add an additional level. So I'm just going to go here to level and add one more. Uh, we can go at 360 centimeters above this one. There we go. So now we have uh, three of these levels uh, and we can create our building here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is jump into level one floor plan and then let's go to the wall tool and I'm just going to be using the storefront curtain wall and then let's create a rectangle and let's build something, something like this. So we can make it, I don't know, 800 by maybe we can go with let's go with a uh, oh let's go like this 800 here and then on this side we can go up to 1200 for example Okay, there we go. So once we have these walls and uh, these walls go up to level two, that's perfectly fine. Now let's create the floor. So let's go here to the floor tool. Uh, for the floor, I'm just going to be using the concrete floor or no, let's go with uh, let's go with exterior decking. That's going to look even better. Uh, go with the rectangle tool and let's give it an offset of something like 160 centimeters. And then we can go here to the corner endpoint to endpoint like that. And there we go. So we have this floor here. Okay, let's now go to the 3D view. And this is what that looks like. So now I just want to select that floor, uh, go to let's see, clipboard, copy to clipboard, and then let's paste it align to selected levels. And let's paste it on levels two and three, click OK. And as you can see, it's going to paste it like so. Uh, then for this uh, wall, uh, curtain wall that we have here below, let's hover over it, hit the tab key once, select the whole chain of walls, attach top base, and then attach it to this floor here. It's going to delete one element, that's perfectly fine. Uh, and then because it's still selected, we can copy this to clipboard, go to paste, align to selected levels. And then here I wanna select level two, click okay and then it's just going to copy that to level two. So here we have some sort of a building where we can apply that facade. Now, I just wanna apply that facade here in the front of the building. I think that's that's uh, that's more than enough, uh, but of course you can do it for the rest of the building just as, a, as an exercise. And 
now, yeah, let's go to, yeah, we can go to level one. Uh, let's go to massing in sight because this is going to be built as an in-place mass. Then you wanna go and check on show mass, go to in-place mass, uh, yeah, mass one, perfectly fine. And then you just wanna place one line here and you're done. You go to the 3D view, let's find that line, here it is. And then you just go to create form. So it's going to look like this. And then I'm just want to extend it all the way to the top, just like that. So here we have our first surface. So this is the starting point. So what you wanna do here is, uh, first let's load in our perfect hexagon panel. As I said, this is what they've modeled in the previous video, so check that out if you want to get that panel. And also it's going to be available on my Patreon page. So I'm going to include that link just below this video. So you can go to my Patreon page, you can get this project file, you can get all of my Revit project files ever. There's over like 500 files, so make sure to check that out as well. So this is that panel that I have created in the previous video, and now I can just load that into the project, just like so. And it's now it's loaded in, and actually I, actually I can close it. Okay, so once it's loaded in, now when I select this, I can go to Divide Surface. Now it's divided. Now instead of no pattern, let's apply obviously a hexagon pattern, but let's apply our perfect hexagon pattern. And it doesn't look perfect at all, but don't worry, we have to make some adjustments. So first we have to uh, expand the properties panel and then at the U grid, let's go with the fixed distance as well as the V grid fixed distance. So on both of them. And then for the distance, let's go with something like 70 or even 60 by 60 centimeters. And let's see what that would look like. Okay, so now it's starting to take, take shape, uh, but still I want to make some adjustments. Actually, let's make it a bit smaller. Let's try 50 by 50. Now that I think about it, I would like to have it a bit smaller. Yeah, I think this looks much better. Okay, so once we have this in place, uh, also we can change the justification. So let's change it to end or beginning. Let's see what that does. Yeah, we can go with this. Anyways, uh, now this is something that I explained in depth in the previous video, so I'm just going to kind of do it really quickly here, and that's how to set up the uh, the parameters here for the for the grid. So this one is going to be the X, and then okay, and then this one is going to be the the Y parameter. So this is just something that's going to help us turn this into a perfect hexagonal grid. And then here we just have to add a formula. Oops, this should be an instance parameter as well. Okay, and then here we just have to add a quick uh, formula that's going to help us with this. As I said, make sure to check that video out if you want an entire explanation of how this works. Okay, so that's the formula, hit apply. And now we have that perfect hexagon uh, facade. Uh, let me just select that, perhaps end. Yeah, okay, I prefer this. Okay, so once we have this facade now in place, uh, now uh, let's select one of the panels. So you just use the tab key to select one of the panels. And here there should be a panel thickness parameter. So I'm just going to drop this down to 10 centimeters, hit apply. Okay, so now it's a little bit smaller. There we go. And now we have to make an additional panel for uh, for the kind of the second layer of the facade. We have some of these kind of full. Uh, let me just open up the image here so you can see that. So we've kind of created these kind of full panels. Now let's create these kind of individual smaller panels. So, or these uh, kind of open or frame panels, I guess you can call them. They're, I think they're there just for aesthetic reasons, but that's good, I like aesthetic. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste uh, my previous panel that they have here. So this is just basically my folder where I have this. So I've just copied this panel and let's call this one the frame. Okay, and then let's open this one up. So it's going to open up like this in Revit, and then what you want to do is just select this geometry and delete that. So we don't want that. Also, it might look confusing with a couple of these. So select the the one that goes straight to the point six or any of the points, and then you can just hide that so it doesn't 
so it doesn't bother you. Okay, so now here I just want to go to the point element, uh, make sure to set it to draw on face, and then you just place it on one of these reference planes. So once it's there, now we can apply the uh, now we can apply the profile there. So you go to set oops not the viewer to set work plane, select this work plane, uh, and then you can go to rectangle tool. Uh, make sure that now draw on a work plane is selected and then you just place it here. So I'm just going to place it like that. Let's just check out the dimensions. So this this is way too large. So let's go with, I don't know, like 80 by 80. Uh, this is in millimeters, by the way. And then also I'm just going to select this and perhaps make it go like this by 10 millimeters on both sides. I think it's going to look much better like this. Okay, so having done that, you select the profile, you hold the control key, you select all of the reference planes, and then you just go to create form and it's going to create a form like that. Then you can use the tab key to select that form and then I'm just going to apply a material here. So let's just apply something. I'm going to use yellow just so we can have a contrast here. Do we have something? Do we have anything yellow? Okay, that's really odd. Do we have anything blue? There we go. Okay, let's use blue. It's easier. Okay, let's hit apply. Okay, and now this should be blue if I switch to realistic. Yeah, it's blue. Okay, now let's load this one into the project and close it. Yeah, let's save the changes. Perfectly fine. Okay, there we go. So we're now inside of our project. So let me try to do something. So I'm just going to select this whole thing. And can I copy this? I haven't tried this before. So uh, this might go or it might not. Okay, so we're just going to copy it once like this, perhaps. Well, we can go, we can go 10 centimeters. That's okay. Okay, it did not copy that. I don't know why. Let's try that again. Nope, it just moved it. So it's not going to let us copy this. That's unfortunate. If I try to select the whole thing, or let's do this, let's finish this, and then let's try copying it. So sometimes in Revit, you have to kind of find a way to f figure out what it likes to do and it, what, what it doesn't like to do. So sometimes you'll be able to do this. Okay, here we go. Now it does that. Now it it allowed us to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to select this kind of front uh, facade, go to edit in place. And now I, I can select that. And here I can change the panel from our perfect hexagon panel to the perfect hexagon panel frame. And there we go. So then it's going to look like this. So as you can see, we have those uh, frame uh, panels on there. And that's exactly what we want to see. So now if I hit finish mass, there we go. I can even view this in a realistic view mode. So it's going to be blue. And I, I really like the way that it turned out. Now, obviously it doesn't look like this in the, uh, in the image. Uh, obviously we have some openings here. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to first select this uh, front facade and let's hide it for a moment. So I'm just going to go here to hide element. Okay, then let's select this one. Let's go to edit in place. Okay. Uh, and then I'm just going to use the tab key to select one of the panels. Now, when you highlight this, it's going to first select the entire facade. But if you use the tab key, it's going to select the panel itself. It's going to allow you to select the panel itself. So if you just want to see the panels without the entire facade, you can hover over it, select one of the panels, right click or Yes, uh, let's go here, select all instances in the entire project. And it's going to select all of these. Uh, and now we can go here and we can isolate that element. So we're left with panels only and not the panel wall. So that's going to make it easier for us to select individual panels. And I wanna select individual panels because I want to delete them. I want to delete some of these panels, obviously, because that's how that wall looks like in the in the image that I have shown you. So let's go like this. We can just go all the way around, selecting individual panels that we want to get rid of. Perhaps like that. 
delete a few here so I'm just selecting them and then I'm simply going to uh, maybe not this one so hold the shift key if you want to bring any of those back and then I can delete these okay I can delete this one as well and let's delete a few here on the bottom as well something like that so not too many but a few and this one here as well okay and then let's delete this perhaps connect this okay there we go so now if I uh, if I go here to reset temporary height isolate it's going to look like this and now it's starting to look like that image that I have shown you and now if I just go to finish mass there we go and now I can go down let's see what's wrong okay Let's close this view and open it up again. Okay, now we have the tools that I want. So here we have the uh, the reveal hidden elements. Select the kind of front panel, uh, and then go to unhide element. There we go. Turn this off, and now we can select that front one, and then we can edit that one in place. So for that one. Actually, I just want to save a few. I'm going to be deleting most of them, uh, but I have another issue that I have to tackle before that, and that's the positioning. So here, if I bring this image up again, if I zoom in, or let's see, we have more images. Yeah, so if we zoom in here, you'll see that this thing is a little bit offset. These hexagons are a little bit offset uh, to the original ones. So we want to mirror that offset. So what I'm going to do is just move this aside. So here, let's select this whole wall. Let's go to our south elevation. Okay. And then I just want to move this. So let's see, can we move this thing? Or we can go finish mass and then move it perhaps. Yeah, this might be better. So you just want to move these things a little bit. Just like that. Perhaps move it here. Okay, there we go. And now as you can see, we have that offset that we were looking for. Okay, so now once we have that offset, we can go back to the 3D view, we can select this thing, go to edit in place, and then we use the same approach. So you use the tab key to select just one of these, you right click, you go to select all instances in the project, then you go here and you can just isolate those uh, elements. And then you can just get rid of the ones that you don't need. So I know that I don't need the ones uh, on the bottom. So as I said, I'm going to be leaving most of them. So what I like to do is just make a big select. Can I select all of them? Yeah, right click, all instances. And then I can just hold the shift key and remove the ones that I want to keep. So I think this is the, the way better approach and an easier approach than to have to just kind of go through and uh, select the ones that I want to delete. So I think this will work better. So now I can just select a few of them just like this. Let's see. Obviously you can play around, you can do whatever you want. There, uh, there, are, there aren't really any rules here to how you want to tackle this. But yeah, let's say that I want to do something like this. Okay, I don't want this one. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with this selection. So now I can just hit delete to get rid of the, the rest of them. I can hit finish. I can hit here, oops, reset temporary height isolate, and then I get something that looks like this. And this is exactly that facade. Obviously, it isn't exactly that facade, but you get the point. Uh, this is basically the approach to modeling something like the uh, facade that I have uh, that I have shown you. This seems to have moved a little bit, so you can you know, move it in the correct place. Yeah, I think something like that will work. Or yeah, you can you can play around with the with the positioning of these panels. But anyways, I think this looks really really good, and I think we have a really nice 
end result here. So there you go. Uh, feel free to experiment with this. As I said, if you want to get this uh, Revit project file, you can find it on my Patreon page, which is going to be the, the second link down below this video. And then also it's going to be up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe uh, for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.